Praise the Lord. Please be seated. God bless you. Be seated and be sensitive. Please play the strings for me. Mighty God, give you praise. Good evening, everybody. It's my goal and my prayer and my desire that every service becomes an experience for someone's life, an experience for someone's destiny. We've been doing this for many years, but we will never take for granted the opportunity that God gives for our growth and our transition. Every service is prepared intentionally, not only to bless, not just to honor the continuity of a ministry's program, but it's an opportunity for the Holy Spirit to come once again and to change our lives. And among the things we must rebuke is familiarity. You must rebuke familiarity. I know how God works. I know how God moves. I know somebody is about to shout. I know somebody will roll as usual. This is what you expect in Koinonia. That familiarity will turn you from a partaker to a spectator you can be in a place be a witness a spectator and not a partaker it takes more than just looking around to be a partaker it takes a heart connection an awareness that one moment in god's presence effectively maximized can turn a man's life around People say one word from God can change a man. No. One word from God does not change a man. One word from God received, understood, and engaged is what will change a man. One word from God to change a man is deception. The devil has never been afraid of the word of God. When the sower sowed, it was Satan himself that came and carried the seed. One word received with meekness, the Bible says, the engrafted word. Praise the Lord. I came tonight with a very serious burden. Um, and many times when the Lord wants you to teach teachings that are very very seasonal and very called for especially as the times demand he will bring them not as sermons he will bring them as burdens it will be a strong burden upon your spirit that will refuse to leave praise the lord and um i've been focusing a lot especially about what i just talked about the power of changing things by changing the power of growing to superior realms of results by being the one to grow i think that sometimes we pay so much attention on the things around us we desire changed that we forget that those things are there because of us that means that if i refuse to transit in life no matter what I try to move, it will come down back to my level. Are we together now? There are many things you would not need to pray for if you pray for yourself. Let me repeat. There are many things you would not need to pray for if you pray on and for yourself. That means if you become the project of the growth, there are many things you may not need to pray for again. It's true. In praying for yourself, you will find out that you are praying for many other things. Your prayer life and indeed your destiny will be hard if you focus on any other thing outside yourself. Pay attention to yourself, the development, your transition. And then you will find out that in doing so, you are automatically influencing every result you desire. Let me repeat what I said earlier on while we're praying, that greatness and success 
is what you attract to yourself not what you pursue what you attract to yourself by reason of who you are becoming if i'm still the person yesterday today then i do not deserve to get any result different from that which i had yesterday the results you seek cannot come to this version of you they are to come but not this version of you the anointing that you seek cannot come upon this version of you the prosperity you seek cannot enter into the pocket of this version of you so many times the power of restraint is not always demonic it is god waiting for the version of you that matches that result please listen and learn and grow this is spiritual intelligence not every restraint is an attack from satan not every restraint is proof that there is something demonic many times it can be god waiting for the version of you that is fit it is not because god cannot take the members from hundred to ten thousand it is not because god cannot take your finances from 500 to 10 million it is not because god cannot take your grace from this level to that level but it cannot come on this version of you the bible says you cannot put new wine in an old wine skin they are all called wine skins the difference is old and new you are still called a human being but the difference is the old version and the new version you are still called a man of god but the man of God before and the new man of God. Ah, Jesus said, why seekest ye the dead among the living? There was a version of me that lied lifeless. You saw that version on the ground, but it's no longer in the grave. A version of me has arisen in the glory of the Father. Not the one that walked the earth now without blood. A version of me that lives by another life. I learned this in my life and as a person I stopped wasting my time to change things it is hard to change things do you know how many things in your life you have to change if you pursue them one by one think how hard it is to look for good friends think how hard it is to look for quality connections and relationships think how hard it is to look for information every level already has the systems and the provisions waiting the cheapest way listen it is harder for me to try to reach to something higher than me to bring it down to my level it is wiser to grow to that level where it no longer becomes difficult remember if you watch a child growing up like one of these are little ones they try to reach for something and you see the difficulty they can fall many times it is cheaper sometimes they can try and stand upon something that can throw them and then pick what they want but an adult who has grown just comes and he can look from that height and without pressure pick the things that are hard today are not hard it is your level that defines them so if you grow you will find out that they are not so the finances that looks like a monster of a realm lord when will i go out of this it's only the old version of you is looking at the destiny that only the new version of you can enter so it looks hard spiritually lord is it possible that i can step into this how will i start seeing visions what does it look like to see a vision will i be in myself will i fall down is it that i'm dying those are unnecessary questions just grow when you grow and enter those realms by experience you will have those answers there are many things about your biological life you did not need to ask it's a burden to ask every question what happens to me when i'm a teenager what happens when i'm 13 give me a detailed information of what will happen when i'm 14 years it's unnecessary just grow as you grow many times you will find out that you didn't even consciously pay attention to those transitions let me ask you a question do you know where your clothes of 10 years were do you know where they are now 
Can you remember giving them out? No. Can you remember burning them up? No. Can you remember packing them to keep somewhere? No. They left for these ones to come. He said, mystery you don't understand. Remember where your first phone is? Remember you didn't throw it. Remember you didn't sell it. Remember you didn't sow it. But where is it? Many times we don't know the things around us are living things too. They are governed by laws. They live quietly and we do not know. May the Lord give us understanding. That the things that we call dead are not dead. They can hear and they can see. They are more obedient to the systems of God than us. Are we together? I never had to tell anybody, stop giving me this kind of honorarium. Stop tearing 2A and rolling 500 naira inside and chucking it in my pocket as a bribe. That would be stupid and arrogant. The key is to grow. When you grow, a law prohibits individuals from approaching you that way. Are we together? So many times when you look at the things around you and you don't like them, they were not designed to live. They were designed to be the reality of anybody in that realm. If you don't like them, move to the realm where there are realities that match your desire. Please listen to me. This will give us intelligence. There are many prayers we pray that are, it's just the mercy of God that answers them. They are not wise prayers. They are prayers that are a reflection of spiritual ignorance. Many times the prayer is not take this away from me. Many times the prayer is take me out of this realm. The realities are fixed. They are there. An heir, as long as he's a child, he says, differed not from a slave, though he be lord of all. He says, but he's under tutors and governors. That means that when you find out there are tutors and governors around, the issue is not to drive them away. The issue is to grow out of childhood and you may not need them again. Praise the Lord. Yes. Another analogy. And then I'll begin to teach on what I have tonight. There are many primary schools, I believe they still do it, where the junior students in that primary school wear short trousers. Is that correct? And then when they get to a particular level, they start to wear long trousers. Now imagine someone in, say, primary two, goes to the teacher and says, Look, I'm tall. It's something that came genetically. And because of that, it may not look good on me to wear a short trouser. The rules will not change because of you. But when you change, you change the rules. You don't change the rules by changing the rules. You change the rules by leaving the realm where those rules apply. All rules don't apply the same at every level. It is true. Are we together? So we seek to transit by the Spirit to realms where certain things no longer hold. Listen to me. Look up, please. Look up. You're writing, but look up. If you do not pay attention to what I'm saying, this is what will happen to you. Everybody speaks from the reality that his transition has captured. So many times, when you hear people speak, you will interpret their speakings from your realm. And based on your realm, it looks untrue. With all humility. If in 24 hours nobody favors me, is proof something is wrong at this level. You see that? Yes. The level God has brought me makes it is either an attack or something about my life. 24 hours cannot happen without someone favoring me. This is the reality at this level. Are we together now? Yes. Once upon a time, if I'm not favored in a year, I'll have to be patient for one year to know whether it's an attack or not. At the end of that year, I say, no, this year it, it was not like that. And then you pray. And then you rise to a realm where it becomes a month. 
you rise to a realm where it becomes a week. If nobody calls my phone in 24 hours seeking for help, something is wrong. I will go for a retreat. 24 hours. I wake up every day without fail with text messages of people needing the grace of God upon my life. Once upon a time, I think something happened to my phone and there was no network. I got up in the morning and flipped my phone and it was empty. I said, this is something is wrong. Something has to be wrong. In five hours, my phone did not ring. Nobody sent a text. Something is wrong. I off the phone and put it back. And there the text. I said, this is it. Because that result did not look like my realm. Now, listen, please. Listen to what I'm teaching you. There are levels where if you pray for one hour, you must punish yourself. Hello? This is not religion. You truly must punish yourself because the demand on your life, the daily servicing of your altar, one hour is too small. If you don't meet that target, you must punish yourself by an extended prayer time someday. Why? Because before you finish thanking God for what he has done, the time should have gone. What God has done is to, before you start listening and say, Lord, let me name my blessings. Thank you because the other day they didn't kill my member somewhere. Thank you, oh God, because the wicked did not get a reason to laugh. One hour is already covered. There are people who don't have much to say thank you for. Thank you, Lord, because I'm alive. Thank you because even though my father is alive, oh, Lord, here are my needs. But there are things God has done to you in some realms. It is wicked to use 10 minutes to say thank you. Now, the time someone is interceding is your thanksgiving time. You use that one hour to roll on the ground and say thank you. Sometimes you use 15 minutes to just keep quiet and let your tears say thank you before you start talking. That's why I'm telling you praying for one hour in certain realms is not talking in tongues for one hour. There are activities in some realms that is only intercession and warfare. What and what? intercession and warfare because of the seriousness of where you are but there are realms that god has given you some level of victory intercession will be after a prolonged period of cry and thanksgiving so two people go to pray come show two people go to pray they represent different realms one person enters and says, Father, I give you thanks. You are the Lion of the tribe of Judah. This is the day or the night, whatever time of the day that the Lord has made. I rejoice. I give thanks. And straight you go into, Lord, these are my petitions. Help me. Oh, this is plenty. The list is increasing. Lord, help me. At the point you start praying, you start lamenting. You are right at that realm. You will find out that the person you went to pray with, you will think he cannot pray. This is what you will be doing. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I glorify you. He's praying, oh, you are merciful. You are merciful. You are merciful. And a song is playing. Lord, you are merciful. And you are there praying and getting angry. I say, this guy doesn't know what he's doing. You are not at the same realm. Listen carefully. Listen carefully. Listen. That person is taking out time. Later on, you are exhausted. You are thirsty. You are tired. You don't even know you have been praying and miss all around. He knows you are praying and miss. He's not correcting you because there is a provision of God's mercy that whoever is at that realm, God should ignore his mistakes and answer him. So you find out that you are praying a lot of nonsense at that realm and you receive supernatural answers. They are not a proof that you are correct. The person standing here already knows. You didn't enter his gates with thanksgiving. You didn't even get to his court. You are shouting around the gates. But God came out and helped you. That is not how he helps men. He just came to help you. Now watch this. This is, if you understand, you will now get what I'm telling you. That your prayer life, imagine that two of you come. You, you truly, with, without, without a sense of pride, two of you cannot be prayer partners. It's not like you can pray together, but you can't be prayer partners. You can only be prayer partners corporately and to round up, maybe belong to the same group. 
Because this guy is already, he brings out his piece of paper. And there's nothing to bring out. You tell him, alright, pray. And you lie down flat. Only to stand up after two hours. You are not sleeping, you know. It's part of the prayer time. And the guy says, God, bros, I'm tired. I'm finished. I need to go. I'll come back later. And he says, okay, God bless you. There are certain realms where you cannot pray with people. There are things God would do and tell you that requires you alone with him. So when people are there, he will relate with you in a way and manner that is general. And you have to remain behind because you know you and God have not talked yet. People are there and you are praying generally. Oh Lord, thank you for everything. Okay, may God bless you, sir. We are going to sleep and you tell them go. And then immediately you go. The atmosphere changes. The Holy Spirit now comes as one adorned for that realm. There are ways he cannot relate. The, the weirdness of his operation at that realm cannot be understood by people. Because sometimes as soon as he comes there, you will do things that don't make sense. You will walk alone and fall down and that's it. You are in a vision. And for the next 30 minutes you are there. Do you think that person will leave you alone? He will wake you and shift you till your spirit cannot return back to your body again. So he will allow them go. You don't covet a man's prayer dimension by saying, let that dimension come and meet me. No. You don't have enough testimonies to pray that kind of prayer. You've not gone through enough pain to know what a man will be doing for three hours. Everything in your life is prayed for by everybody. You don't know what it means to be attacked. What commission have you been given? What assignment? What, what is the devil going to attack you for? It's just general attacks here and there just to bring down your spiritual life. Nothing serious. So you can stroll around for 10 minutes and go. But there are certain burdens that when, I, when they are on your head. The time it takes me to pray for one department alone in Koinonia will surprise you. There are, when you know, see, listen, the weight on your head determines how you walk. If you are carrying a cup on your head, you can even leave it and walk around. If you are carrying a headpan, you can walk around. If you are carrying a destiny, the walk is so slippery, God must lead you on how to walk. This is what people do not understand. So this thing people generally call prayer is many things at many realms. That's why you see me encourage people. I... As I began to grow in the things of God, I found out that I cannot pray comfortably in the daytime. My life at this level will not allow me to maximize prayer. The distraction that will come from my phone ringing, I don't off my phone. Whether I'm on pulpit or my phone is, if my phone is off, I'm either taking a flight or maybe something is done. You see that? I charge my phone an average of twice every day. I have to because of you. Do you know living is not general? The concept of living is dimensional. Listen to me. That means when you are tired of certain things, certain experiences around you, someone else is coming into that dimension. So you are not going to say, Lord, take away those things. Your job is to rise to the next dimension. Are we together now? Once upon a time, I remember those days, if there were 30 people and I was going to minister to them, I would have to lay hands on everybody one by one. It was very exhausting. And I said, God, there has to be a better way. Once upon a time, if God is talking to me and I see in the spirit that God wants to touch you, I will have to walk to you to touch you for that word to come to pass. That was... It was not what God could do. It was what my renewal and my alignment at that level could allow him to do. And I knew that if I continue that way, what if I have 30 minutes to preach and God wants to touch 500 people? I follow them one by one, touch somebody in overflow three, come back, touch this. How do you touch the people online? And then I said, God, there has to be a way. 
And he said, of course there is a way. For I am a man under authority. And I say to one, go. And he goeth. That your words can become you. You don't have to move. Your presence can be poured into your words. You can send it on errand. Backed up by the anointing of the Spirit. And it will produce the same effect. And I said, okay God, what does it take? Let's go. If you are interested. Now when you rise to that realm, you will see it. And then sometimes a new believer will sit down and be wondering, wow, how does this thing happen? If the Holy Spirit shows me that he wants to touch someone in overflow 3 now, you see. All I need to do is not just to speak it or say it. You see that? You agree with God. It looks simple until you are taught what really happens. You come and collect the mic and talk. I will tell you when God wants to touch somebody, your job is to just say it. And you will be very surprised to see as if God doesn't love you. So most of this prayer, Lord, why did you disgrace me? I went to this meeting expecting the result of a realm. You went to the meeting with the expectation of a realm you have not entered. Because you saw somebody and you said, no, Abba, this must happen. Are we together? There are people who carry graces. As soon as they sit down and begin to talk, something about the realm and the dimension of God that they walk in will force you to pay attention. They don't have to say, keep quiet. No. There are realms where they say, oh yeah, keep quiet now. Praise God, everybody, listen. But there are realms where there are other provisions. Some spiritual arsenals have been provided that compel men to hear you. So you can see two men of God operating. Everybody is bringing his possibilities. Are we together? Yes. To believe that everybody is just generically carrying eternal life, carrying the Holy Spirit, you are right, but you are wrong. People come with their realms and the possibilities that come with those realms. Listen to me. And that means that if and when you are tired of what you are seeing and you do not like it, the Bible says, who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? There is a hill. There is a level where you can rise to. Elijah was sitting uphill and he was able to see those who were coming. And he called down fire on them. He was sitting at an altitude. Physically, but that can also be symbolic of an altitude in the spirit. Papa Iya Deboe can just come and stand on this pulpit and just say thank you and speak and say, let me bless you. I declare that before the end of this week, you will be favored. Now, he's speaking from a realm. You will say, Amen. It may not sound charismatic, it may not sound apostolic, nobody falls, nobody rises. But the nature of the spiritual provision that follows his grace will insist that that word comes to pass. Not because you believe it, for the sake of the position he represents to the body. So you see him not say, well, do you have, there are realms where you say, have faith, express I'm sensing unbelief. You are stopping this thing from happening. Truly, there are dimensions where God does a thing, not just for His name's sake. He does it to honor the covenant He has with the vessels. It's true. That's why you can find somebody will come under a ministry and way before he starts learning how to tithe, he will start receiving results of a tither breakthrough open doors and when you meet him and say you are so successful teach me about success it will be the worst 30 minutes of your life he will vent ignorance from a to z and say why are you succeeding he said, well i don't know and truly he's right he doesn't know and if he makes a mistake to go out of that covering in one week everything will dry because that thing will come his results will come back to look like his true realm do you believe what i'm sharing with you yes 
the animals did not want to be saved they didn't know how to be saved but they came under the covering of noah's ark it was built with food inside to sustain them the animals would come out after the flood like heroes but where they left alone they would die there are dimensions in the spirit and there are realities that means that if i want you to move to another dimension of results then i must be able to guide you on the principles that will transit you from where you are to where you need to be there are destinies that no matter how you pray and fast at that level there are certain levels of the blessings of the lord that may never be made manifest your capacity at that level will not allow god bless you there is no need for that level of blessing at that level are we together there are things you must be taught that means every time come look up please that means every time the word of god is coming to you it's not only edifying you listen very carefully it's not only informing you it's transiting you that means a possibility exists that you came here koinonia at a realm and by the time we are sharing the grace you would think because you wore the same clothes you are the same person going out immediately you step out you will find out that the reality that followed you here is not the reality that went out with you many of you especially men of god come here and you just sit for one meeting and at the end of it sometimes you don't even get to see me and you are prayed for and that's it all you need to do is go back to your church or your fellowship and the first surprise is when you open your bible ah, ah, what is this again then you stand to pray and it will surprise you let me tell you another thing that will surprise you your worship team members that didn't follow you will start singing and you will think this is koinonia worship team you took something more than you back to your meeting are you seeing that remember you didn't call them to tell them look this is where i went to this is the grace i carried you went quietly but the nature of that grace is like a software it starts reprogramming everything around you to reflect the level you have now entered all of a sudden you find out that if you are someone who were not excellent for instance and you contacted that grace for excellence you come back with it you don't have to start teaching first you will find out that in a span of two months exceptionally excellent people will start coming to your platforms they were called there is a grace that calls them they don't hear you because you are not yet at the level where they hear there are ministries that no matter what branch you open even if they open the branch close to a mosque they must have excellent people it's not like they bring people from the headquarters the grace was designed to ransack the city and look for those who must make the anointing that is upon that level to work to come there are cities where people hardly get land for church and for certain things but there are ministries that enter with some graces as soon as they enter there must be vacancy suddenly somebody gets visa and is going abroad and he leaves his house and they demolish that house and it becomes a church the pressure that that grace puts on a territory until there are results please listen to what i'm telling you that means there is a grace you can carry that when you stand somewhere it becomes impossible for people to ignore you it's not you you have risen to a level that grace will begin to compel it will orchestrate a scenario that must bring you out no matter where you hide something must happen to the point that if god if it's a grace at that level god has mandated that at that level any time you go you must be seen and his grace must be acknowledged so you are humble and because you are in that place god that anointing can make somebody who has no business coming there who knows you to come there so that he can announce you and then leave the grace on your life there are dimensions of favor that you can enter into huh that 
even if it's on a Saturday night, you speak over people, they must be blessed. Even if it's Sunday during service. It's true. It's true. There are graces. Please listen to me. There are dimensions you get to in the spirit that when you make certain spiritual utterances and say God said, even if it's not God that said it, because of the realm you occupy, he will honor what you have said and rebuke you when you go back. Are we together? That means it is possible for a man of God, a prophet, to come and see. Learn this. A prophet can come and see that Shehu is supposed to be blessed October. That's what the revelation gave and is accurate. But I can come with a dimension. Listen carefully. Until a higher dimension comes, the highest grace that spoke is what works. But when a higher grace comes, I can make that October become tomorrow. I'm not a prophet. I came with a realm of intimacy and a covenant that I have with God. And I can look at him and say, my friend, um, something fell down and you gave me. Look at this. I bless you by tomorrow. And God will take what... It doesn't mean the prophet lied. It is the implication of the realm that was introduced. Believers hear this and grow. So if you don't understand, you may go back and say, fake prophet, you prophesied nonsense. No. The prophet himself, even that office is in levels. A prophet in this realm is not greater than a Christian in this realm. The realm which is a reflection of his work with God must bow. Listen, the office that that man has as powerful as it is, there is a realm of intimacy you can have with God that equals that office. You are not a prophet, but the level of dealing you have gotten with, your result is the same result a prophet will get. So when you stand side by side by, with a prophet, they will call two of you prophets. You are not a prophet. You have only transited to a realm where there is no difference between you and the result of a prophet or an apostle. These are deep mysteries in the kingdom that many people do not understand. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's powerful. That means if you truly want to be a blessing, more than office, more than titles, seek to be transitioned to a deep dimension of work with the Holy Spirit where there are results you will command that it looks like you are getting results from every office. A point will come, your members will not even know who you are. They said, this guy is a prophet, but are you really a prophet? This guy is an evangelist, but you are prophesying more than a prophet. And you say you are an evangelist. You say, God told me I'm an evangelist. You started as an evangelist. Your intimacy took you to the realm where only prophets should get to. And took you to a realm higher than that dimension. That means it is possible for a man of God you offend to curse you in anger. And truly it will happen. But a man of God will come who is not a prophet, not an apostle, not anything. But in a dimension of grace, he has been given the power. He will nullify that thing and say it is true. Based on this course, you should die tomorrow. But I hold your hands. God, look at him for my sake. Let it go. It's true. I'm looking for the best way I will help you understand this thing tonight. These are the dimensions that are at work in us. That certain things can happen to people because certain people are there. Are we together? Yes. 
all of these things you see are provisions that God put in place to ensure that the body continues to grow and that we continue to receive results. You can't believe that I've not even touched my message tonight. I just came with a hunger and a burden. Let's see what I can touch. I took the A part of what I want to share last week. Responding to the situation that we have that is widespread now. People getting frustrated as to whether the word of God produces results or not. Many of you have seen the rate of suicide and the rate of not armed robbery, not Boko Haram. These are people killing themselves now. A man leaves his family and then they are called that he died. Left a note, I'm tired of life and that's it. And young people also killing themselves. And those who are alive, it's almost as if they are dead already depression teenagers having depression young people having high blood pressure all kinds of health related issues there is an answer i attempted to answer that question last week was it or the week before last that the reason the first reason that we looked at was because of the nature and the kind of mentorship and teaching are we together? I stated that people have been taught that the value of their life is in the abundance of the physical things they get. And so by the time you find out that you are unable to get a car and a house and a child and a husband and a wife and certain things at certain levels, self-inflicted frustration begins to come. Listen carefully. And as a result, people become depressed. You hear people saying, as old as I am, I, I don't have a child, or I don't have a wife, or I don't have a husband, or I don't have my own house. Can you imagine at this age I am still renting? Can you imagine this and that? Can you imagine at this age I have only three girls, no boy, you know, and all of these kinds of things. And I told us that it is because, first, the kinds of teachings, please listen carefully. The kinds of teachings that we have taught people. We have taught people that spirituality, and in many circles, sadly, that spirituality is only measured in the acquisition of physical things. Are we together? So, by the time I have, by the time I have certain things for a prolonged period of time, maybe a house, a car, and all of that, I am perceived to not be growing spiritually. Are we together? Yes. Why do you still have this car after 10 years? Why are you still living here after 20 years? So that pressure to do things, to prove that the word is working. When our, our expectations continually become disappointed, then we are plunged into that state of depression. Are we together? But then tonight's teaching also is an attempt to bring balance to it. To help us understand it is important for us to get results and i want to talk um maybe just a few minutes our time is already spent on the fact that i believe that many people are unable to rise to the realms please listen the realms that will allow their lives reflect the faithfulness of god among many things because we have not learned thank you we have not learned that success is not something you pursue please say after me you do not pursue success you do not pursue greatness there is nobody who tries to pursue success or pursue greatness whether spiritually financially and otherwise that will ever have it it is not something you pursue. Please listen to me. It is something that you draw. It is attracted to your life on the strength of who you become. And listen to me. There are certain traits. Every blessed man, 
every anointed man, every influential man, everyone that has been trusted with grace and influence will tell you, listen, there are a set of traits that individuals must possess. You call it character, you call it whatever it is. There are belief systems. Say belief systems. There are, there are mindset conditionings that you must be able to have that will allow you to transit, like I said earlier, to the realms where these things effortlessly. Let me tell you this. Every time you struggle unnecessarily to get something, stop immediately. Did you hear what I said? Every time you are struggling unnecessarily to get a thing, stop immediately. It may be proof that you have not acquired the spiritual, the psychological, and the spiritual, maybe sometimes the intellectual stamina to bring that thing. This is rainy season. No farmer would go to the farm and have to labor so much to till the ground. Why? Because part of the provision of the rainy season is a system that softens the soil. Are we together now? But if you try to till the ground by November, December, especially at this part of the country, you're going to have a hard time. So there are certain things we are trying to get. It's proof that although you are trying to reach out and it's running away from you, it's telling you something by running that you are not yet qualified for me. So instead of running unnecessarily, cut away and stay back and build the belief systems Build the track record in the spirit that makes for that thing. And I tell you, whatever it is that left you will come to you and stick to you and refuse to go. It is true for finances. It is true for ministry. It is true for leadership. It is true for the anointing. It is true for revelation. It is true for anything. I want to walk you through a few belief systems tonight. Maybe just two, three and we'll pray since our time is gone that I believe is...